Well, what a glorious day here in Melbourne. First time for a long time, I gotta say. Well, seems like it anyway. I'm out, uh, out near Yarra Glen, obviously Paul's Lane. This is kind of a fairly well-known area for trail bike riding up this road. And further on, there's some pretty good adventure rides, adventure riding tracks as well. So that's what I'm out today, just to have a bit of a look. Now I've got two reasons to be out today. One is just to get back out on the, out on the bike. It's been too many weeks for me without a ride. Uh, I did catch COVID in the middle there somewhere, not nice. The second reason, which is the exciting reason, is there's some big upgrades on the 500. So let's get into this ride and I'll tell you a bit more about the upgrades that I've done. Hit that corner right, you're in trouble. So first of the upgrades that we'll talk about is the uh, suspension. I've had a suspension upgrade. I spoke about getting a heavier spring in my review video, and that's exactly what I've done. I've gone up one spring rate in the back. So I've gone from the uh, KTM have sort of three rates, I guess, comes in the middle ones, 75 to 85 kilo riders. So I've gone up to the top one, which is the 85 to 95 kilo riders. And first impressions are money well spent. It just doesn't come anywhere near bottoming out and it just feels a lot smoother. It doesn't seem to have all the travel that sort of used to be there on the softer spring doesn't doesn't move as much so it's just just seems smoother um, really like it now this is all set up for you know either day bags or some luggage so that's how i've set it and it's, it feels really good and and the front what I had done was something, uh, what do they call it? Uh, low speed, I can't remember the phrase that he used. It's some sort of valving which affects the speed of the compression stroke, maybe? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm not a suspension guy, but I tell you, if you want, if you want to speak to a suspension guy, have a chat to Chad's off-road setups down at Geelong. I tell you, someone who is an absolute fanatic knows his subject inside and out. He's the man to speak to. He didn't see a need to change the springs in the forks, just the valving, but that has made a big difference. It's just a lot smoother. It reacts more, uh, what's the word, more consistently. A lot smoother. You can hit these sort of washout jump things and land. And it's all it's all just smooth. Like there's just no there's no dramas. It doesn't want to spear off anywhere. Now this is only my first ride. It's first impressions. Little echidna there. Isn't he cute? Leave him alone. What I've noticed so far is that with the stock front suspension, if you hit these washouts, get the front up, and then land a little bit, you know, not centered, land it on an angle or you land a bit of a turn maybe, it can get a bit dodgy. Like it, it reacts a bit weird. That's with the stock ones, but with these ones, it just seems, it just seems a lot more uh, stable. 
uh, consistent, smooth, un unreactive, I guess. It doesn't react as badly as the stock does. So, and the rear, it's just soaking up these, all of these little bumps and jumps, soaking them up. So I've got my day pack on the back uh, with tubes and tools in it. There's probably maybe five kilos in that. At the moment I've got pretty much a full tank of petrol. So there's probably, it have to be 12 kilos of weight in the, in the tank. Got a couple of litres of water in my camelback. It's pretty much loaded for a day ride and it's working really well. All right, so the second upgrade to the 500 is that now sports the Vortex ECU. Something else that I mentioned in my review video and completely coincidentally, uh, Richard from Vortex messaged me just after I put that comment up there and uh, said give him a call if I ever want to have a play with the Vortex unit. So I did. I went and saw Richard, had a good chat with him. Yet another absolutely fanatical guy. Loves what he does, loves his product. You know, years of research and just so keen to create a product you know, that, that really works. As a disclaimer, Richard gave me a unit to try out. It's actually the one out of his bike that he's been running for a while, so he gave me that to try. Um, I haven't paid for this one. I did pay for the suspension. Suspension's all, you know, all my own money. Really happy with that. But the, the, the Vortex ECU is a loaner. I mentioned this in the review video. The Australian bikes, the Euro bikes, are vastly different to the US bikes. The US bikes have all the emissions gear on them, pipes and hoses and different intake, reed block thing and you know, spark arresters in the muffler. And accordingly, the, the stock ECU is uh, tuned for all of that stuff. So even if you remove all of that stuff, you're still stuck with the stock ECU that just doesn't work properly. That's why replacement ECUs in the US market, especially for racing and that, huge, huge market because it's a huge, huge difference. It's not such a big deal in Australia. We don't have the emission stuff, the ECU is tuned differently. So it's pretty good anyway. Pretty good, but can always be made better. That's where people like Richard come in. So first impressions on the Vortex is it's snappier, like off the off sort of the bottom end. I mean, I've only been riding a couple of hours, but I have not experienced any flame outs at all. Probably about all I can tell you at the moment, only a couple of hours. Now, am I the target audience for this unit? Absolutely not. I am not a racer, and I reckon Richard would probably tell you the same thing. One of the good things about it though is that it has I mean, 10 different map settings pre-programmed into the unit and when you get the unit you get a piece of paper which tells you this setting for these conditions. And the other good thing with the Vortex is it, it is literally plug and play. And it's unplug the old one, plug in the new one and you are done. And it interfaces with the KTM map switch which you can see down there. Basically, map one defaults to map one on the vortex, and map two on the switch changes to whatever you've set the switch at on the unit. So if you've set map six on the unit via the little uh, little dot rotary switch on there, when you select map two on the KTM switch, it will change to map six. I'll put a screenshot here of all of some of the different settings you can choose from, but there's enduro, there's, there's sand, there's all sorts of different ones. 
there's two other switches so you can make the make the, the mixture leaner or richer and I guess if you're into racing and all that tune it to the conditions that you need. One of the things I'm interested in seeing is what it does to fuel economy. Now Richard reckons on if you run on map one you should be able to get about 21 kilometers per litre. I'd be pretty happy with that and that's what I'm keen to see maybe at the end of today if I can do enough kilometres to get a decent sort of a reading. So that's my day, I made it out alive. Just some final thoughts on both of these mods. Now, everything that I thought that the KTM suspension did well, well now it does it even better. So thanks to Chad's off-road for that. And for the Vortex ECU, after another couple of hours, yes, I'm happy with it. I like the way that the power is delivered. There's more power down low, which is where I like it. I do though want to get it on a longer ride, I want to play with the different map settings and just see what it can do over a longer period of time. So big thanks to Chad's Off-Road for the suspension and to Vortex for the ECU. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.